Hey everyone, I'm Nick Raboy from MongoDB, and in this video, we're going to explore the MongoDB.NET Analyzer for your C-sharp based applications. So what exactly is the MongoDB.NET Analyzer? Well, it's a tool that you can use within Visual Studio that will help you analyze your MongoDB queries that are written in C Sharp, so anything written with link, et cetera. And it will actually translate that to the MongoDB Query API. So that way you know exactly what you're getting yourself into when you're writing your native .NET application code. Now, there are a few prerequisites prior to getting too deeply involved in this particular video. One, you will need a MongoDB Atlas cluster. That cluster will need to be properly configured, so you will need proper network access rules. You'll need various user rules, uh, anything that you would use for developing your own applications. We will be using Visual Studio in this particular video. You could use the command line, but for the sake of this particular video, it will be Visual Studio. And just to be clear, we're not gonna be using Visual Studio code. Right now, we are gonna be using Visual Studio. So with all that in mind, let's go ahead and go into our Visual Studio application. So up on my screen, you'll notice that I do have a very basic Visual Studio application. If you've been keeping up with my tutorials that I put on the Developer Center, you'll recognize this. This is actually a simple application that will get us connected to a MongoDB Atlas cluster. I do have a particular database that I'm using. I'm using the Sample Enflix data set. I'm using the Movies collection. And I do have a movie class, which I'll show right now, which is properly mapped to each of my document fields for that particular collection. Now, it's not all of the document fields. You don't need to do it all, at least for this particular example. This should be more than enough. If you want more of a backstory on this particular application and how we built it, go ahead and check out the Developer Hub, do a search for .NET Core, and it should come up. Now, going back into the program.cs file, you'll notice that I am establishing a connection. I am using version three of the link provider, and I do have a handle to my database and collection. Now, before we begin, let's go ahead and get that MongoDB analyzer up and running within Visual Studio. So what we can do, there's numerous ways that you can do it. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Tools. And from Tools, I'm gonna to say NuGet Package Manager. And I'm gonna say Package Manager Console. Now, once the console loads, you can do something like install package. And I'm gonna say mongodb.analyzer. And you could specify a specific version that you wanna use. I'm just gonna use the latest. After you run that command, the analyzer will be available to you. So let's go ahead and see what this particular analyzer offers us in terms of helping us develop great applications with MongoDB. The first thing that I did was I clicked on the error list within my console area of Visual Studio, and you can see various output messages about my application. I've actually called my application analyzer example, so that way you don't get confused with, is this part of the analyzer itself, or is this just the name of my project? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start writing some code and we're gonna see how it works as we do it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mess around with just a standard filter for a MongoDB find operation. So I'm gonna say var filter and I'm gonna say builders and this is gonna be of type movie and I'm gonna say filter and this will be a match type filter, so an equality filter. So I'm gonna say EQ, I'm gonna say M for movie and I'm going to match on the title. So let's go ahead and say m.title, because that's the field that I have within my movie.cs file. Now the actual title value, let's go ahead and call it Batman. It doesn't really matter uh, for this particular example. I'm gonna add a semicolon. Now you'll notice that if I hover over builders, you'll see that it says MA Builders 1001 title Batman, because that's what it would actually look like in the MongoDB query API. You'll also notice that if you scroll down to the console area, that it does have that MA Builder section as well, and it says title Batman. So that's pretty helpful. But for this particular example, this is probably isn't enough for us. So let's go ahead and extend upon this. I'm gonna to add to my filter for this particular potentially theoretical find operation. I'm gonna add an ampersand symbol. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say builders once more, type movie, I'm gonna say dot filter, this time around, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a greater than or equal to expression. So GTE. I'm gonna say M for movie. And I'm gonna say M dot year. And let's go ahead and say that it has to be greater than 1980. Once again, the actual data set that we're using in this example doesn't really matter. The point of this video example is to show you how the analyzer will help you in your own applications. So I have that added. Let's go ahead and hover over builders once more. 
you can see that now our filter criteria, what you would see in MongoDB as far as the query API, has changed to what you would actually see if you were using, say, for example, MongoDB Compass, the MongoDB Shell, etc. So it includes title, Batman, and then the year, it uses the dollar sign greater than or equal to 1980. And if I scroll down once more into the console, you can see that that is also there as well. So you have various opportunities to see this kind of information. Because if you're writing stuff with Compass, for example, and uh, it's working fine in Compass, but it's not really working fine in your .NET application, well, now you can compare the two. Does this particular filter query look like what you wrote in Compass or similar? So it does make your life a lot easier. Now let's go ahead and skip past the filter. Let's go ahead and go into Link because a lot of you as .NET developers will be using Link when you're writing your .NET applications with MongoDB. So I'm gonna leave what we have for the filter. It won't be used. We're not gonna actually do a find operation. What I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say var results and I'm gonna say movies collection because that's what I've named it up on uh, the previous line. And I'm gonna say as queryable now I'm actually going to write my link. So I'm going to say dot where. I'm going to say M for movies. And I'm going to say M dot year greater than 1980. And M dot year less than 1990. And this is just a random query that I'm throwing together. Let's go ahead and say that we want to limit the results. Let's maybe complicate our pipeline just a, a little bit more. So I'm going to say take five. So I'm going to limit it to five results. I'm going to add a semicolon. Now, if I hover over movies collection, we have an aggregation. So when we're using link, we're using aggregations and it recognizes that we're doing a match for our first stage of the pipeline and a limit for the second stage of the pipeline. Once again, very useful when it comes to actually writing and comparing your queries against how they would perform in other circumstances. Scrolling down to the console, that information is there as well. Now that's all in good. We have a kind of printout of what happens when we're writing successful or appropriate queries, even if they might not match our desired results in the end, uh, because you're still learning, say for example. What happens if you try to use a command that doesn't work with the .NET driver or et cetera? So let's use the example where we're trying to make use of a command that doesn't work with .NET and MongoDB. Um, and you may run into this every once in a while. Let's take the example of adding to our link query. Let's go ahead and say dot where. We're going to say M for movies. And we're going to say M dot get hash code. And we're just going to say maybe equals one, two, three, four. Now, that command's not currently supported when it comes to MongoDB and link. I can see that when I hover over it, but I can also see it when I look down in the console. It very clearly says document.get hash code is not supported. So this should help you when it comes to actually writing your .NET applications with MongoDB, as previously mentioned. As you've seen in this video, the MongoDB Analyzer is a really powerful tool. It gives you immediate feedback on your builders and link queries, and also identifies unsupported expressions so you can prevent errors from cropping up at runtime. These different features mean that using the MongoDB Analyzer can be a big time saver when building .NET applications on MongoDB. If you like this particular video and you want to see some more, there is actually a blog post available that was written by Adrian Tack, and uh, it, it covers a lot of the same stuff that I covered in the video. So if you want more hands-on, uh, this should help you out as well. If you like this particular video, if it was beneficial to you, please take a moment to drop a like on that video and then subscribe to the MongoDB YouTube channel. It let's us know we're doing a good job and it gives you reminders about uh, other videos that come out that you might find useful. Until next time, everyone, have a great rest of your day.